Welcome to Together by AGCI. I'm Marissa Butterworth. In honor of Mother's Day, I invited a mom that I know and respect to share with us. Neely McQueen is the co-lead pastor of Overlake Church and has led for over 25 years in church and parachurch organizations. She is a wife and mom to three young adults. On a personal note, she is wicked smart, one of the funniest people that I know, and a fellow adopted mom. I hope you enjoy this conversation and learn as much as I did. Hello, Neely. I'm so excited to have you on the little podcast here. Um, like if you, um, like if someone was a fly on the wall, we've already kind of had this conversation. We've like talked to each other a little bit about this and I'm really excited, but, um, also you're like, you've always been, I've known you for, I don't know, like 18, 17, 18 years, which makes me feel really old first of all, but, um, like you're just one of the funniest people that I've ever met and also, um, like super smart and, um, it's been cool to be able to kind of watch and be a fly on the wall to your life. And like starting Mm with, we were both like young moms and trying to just like keep things together and then, you know, branching off into careers and families and all that kind of fun stuff. So I'm so excited to have you here. Yeah, it's good. It's good to be together. Uh, yeah. My oldest is home from college, and I remember when he was little and bit your oldest, bit his little finger in his car seat. You know, we've been friends <laughs> for a long time. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> Liam, for whatever reason, he's been bit a lot by a lot of kids. That's like a familiar story. So I'm starting to think maybe, maybe it's him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why did you put your finger in their mouth, Liam? That's right. Why was your cheek near them? That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, poor Liam. I know. It's just how it goes at that age. I don't think Sim would bite him again, though, right now, though. So I think I we're think, winning. I think he's grown out of that phase. <laughs> That's a parenting win for us. Yes. <laughs> Turns oh out my gosh. they're not like that forever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Well, it's perfect that we're talking about this because this is our Mother's Day podcast. And so sometimes you just have to take the wins where you can get them. And if that's your 19-year-old not biting my 18-year-old, then psh, I think we've Win. done it. Yeah, I think we can I'm end this podcast mom. right now. <laughs> I'm a good mom. I have done it. <laughs> we've got to hold on to that. <laughs> that's right. Oh exactly. my gosh. <laughs> well, I'm I'm so excited um, to have you on to talk about um, like the today's podcast. I've entitled "God's Complete Guide to Parenting," hmm. and um, I'm excited about this because it's a little bit of, of a different look at things um, than sometimes I think we're taught as women. And um, like I've done some research on this and um, really it's just to keep up with you. Mm-hmm. So um, I know that you know a lot about this. So I'm so excited just like when we talked about this before, I learned a lot. And then, you know, as we get going, I am 100% positive, no pressure that I'll learn more from you. And I think I had a lot of like, oh my gosh, like I never knew that moment. So mm-hmm. I'm super excited. But um, Je- Jesus's favorite um term for God that I have heard a lot of is always Abba Father, Mm -hmm. which I love. And it's um, like most closely translated to daddy, which um, at least from what I can find, so correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, and, and I love that because it's like such a familiar term Mm -hmm. of like endearment that it would be daddy. And Mm -hmm. um, I love, like, I love that because I love thinking about God as our parent, you know, that he's our parent and that he's also, you know, an example for us. So, um, like everyone knows here, like both Neely and I are parents, but I should also mention like that we're both actually adoptive moms. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have that in common. We didn't have that when we first met, but it happened to be part of both of our stories. So, um, for this mother's day podcast, um, I really just want to take a look at, um, some of like my favorite motherly attributes Mm -hmm. of God and like talk through it with you. And because you know way more about it and it would be Mm. really boring if it was just me talking Mm. about it. I'm pretty sure. (laughs) Nah, I think you do great. 
It'd be great. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I might turn it off eventually, but whatever. Um, so, so in like, this is where I'm, this may be as deep as I get, but in the Celtic tradition, I can't believe I just started that. I love um, that when I read that. That was such a great line. It's great. Good. In the Celtic tradition, mm-hmm. um, they really believe in God, like, first of all, as a father, mm-hmm. then the Holy Spirit as mother, mm-hmm. and then Jesus as son. Mm-hmm. And, um, like, even if you think back to the beginning of the Bible, to the creation story, it said God created humans in his own image, both male and female. But in, um, I think, I mean, this is me, in our cu- current culture, sometimes... Um, The idea of God having a maternal nature Mm -hmm. is a more foreign concept. And I'm curious, like, why do you think that is? Yeah. Well, just to start right off with diving into it. Just jumping in. That's right. The passage you quote from Genesis, depending on translation you read, the language around pronouns in his image is actually different. In, for example, the common English Bible translation, it says it removes gender and says in God's image, um, Mm. God created them. And I think that is actually part of our dilemma is our use of language around God. And you're right. God does invite us to know him intimately as daddy. Like there is some intimate relationship there, but there we hold to, you know, the tradition that God's not a man, um, that God is being. And within that being is both um, what makes us up masculine and feminine, feminine qualities. And so I think even in the beginning of language, I, I struggle still as I talk about who God is, the ease of which he comes out of my mouth. Yeah. Well, that's going to be a hurdle for us. Then when we think of who God is, when we think of, characteristics of who God is. If he is always the pronoun we use when we're talking about God, um, then we find ourselves in our image in the, what we begin to see and connect to begins to be masculine or man. Um, In actually seminary, most professors try to strive, like not use he, like not use the language of pronouns around he, because, so they'll say God self instead of himself. They'll say God self. Huh. Um, just to kind of invite us in, because there actually is so much language. I mean, right out the door, like, is this idea that we see God birthing creation? Uh, we, the idea of us being born again, uh, you know, that mm-hmm. is all maternal processes taking yes. place. Uh, it is the mother who gives birth. Um, and so, even when you talk about the earliest traditions around Trinity, which you talked about there, is. Um, the language in which um, God begets Jesus, which mm-hmm. is kind of birthing Jesus into the world. So mm-hmm. there is actually more language, but because of our use of pronouns and how we use language and the familiarity of like wanting to be in relationship yes. with an intimate God, um, it kind of has been, you know, limited our own ideas about who God is. Um, yeah. or more comfortable with that. So yeah, I think and I language love that. matters. I love that the language matters because it brought, it gives us the opportunity like to broaden our understanding mm-hmm. of God. And even just in that like little example, it's like, gosh, there's so much to be learned. And in, in mm-hmm. my entire lifetime, I'm not going to understand it all. And that mm-hmm. is like one little tiny example. Yeah. Um, and if I want to just say for anyone like watching or listening, um, like, please don't let the like term, the pronouns term throw mm-hmm. you off. I know that that can be like a hot button issue right now. And we're not even trying to go there. This is mm-hmm. not like anything that I think um, is is trying to be, you know, edgy or, or anything. This is just <laughs> right. like talking. I, I think for, for moms, it's important to hear like that we have a godly example mm-hmm. uh, as well. And mm-hmm. it's something that we don't hear about a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and like that, it's something that we can look to as well. It's so important. So I don't, I don't know, like, yeah, it, 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 I just don't want people to like 
Yeah. Exit out just because this is like right. something maybe they haven't heard as much. And I love right. you saying like this is what at seminary, this is what professors are talking about. Yeah. Well, I think even too, like um, in like a really personal way, like how many of us um, could use the idea of connecting to God as mother as a healing part of our journeys. Um, whatever that may be, the experience we bring to it. Um, And I think it is actually a beautiful invitation to know God in in another intimate way. Um, And I think even some of the names of God, which I was sharing this with you earlier, is that one of the names we we commonly know, um, especially if you're Amy Grant fan, which um, you know I am. That's right. <laughs> um, I think we went to see her in concert together. Actually. We did. <laughs> um, is El Shaddai, which we you know, we sung that song with Amy Grant. Um, not. I'm, Jim, it's hard to not sing it right now. Right now, exactly. In my head. exactly. Yes, exactly. And some who translate that, what um, that how that gets translated is actually like it's essentially the God who provides, the God who gives us all that we need. And um, it comes from the Shaddai is like mountain or could be breast. And so it's the God of many breasts yeah. it is, is one way mm-hmm. it is translated or understood. And it's this idea of like what is so intimately happening when a child is being uh, fed and cared for by their mother in that very intimate way. It's our own stories have keep us from connecting with God in the intimate way. Yes. because of a paternal or a maternal wound. And here is an opportunity actually for scripture, our, our image of God to expand and heal in those places. Which I love. Yeah. And we talked about that. Like, I don't want to speak for you, but for me, I had a strained, we'll say uh-huh. I have a strained relationship with my mom. And so I really felt like going into motherhood, like, oh my gosh, I kind of don't, really know what I'm doing, which I think everyone feels like to a certain extent. I'll say mm-hmm. that. But um like I don't know how to do this in a healthy way. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't have a healthy example. And um like so even that like brings me some comfort to mm-hmm. know that I can turn to God and the biblical example there of like mm-hmm. what mother what beautiful motherhood Mm -hmm. can look like and Mm -hmm. and yeah it does bring me a great deal of comfort to know that I don't yeah you know have to relate and I mean not that I haven't been around other amazing moms I've seen other moms in action that kind of thing but there's like that wound that can happen Mm -hmm. from your father or and or mother I happen to have both but um like yeah this is I hope I hope something yeah. that people can like dive into a little bit deeper on their own and yeah. maybe experience healing as well. Yeah. In this. Yeah. Well, and I think this is, I think we'll talk about this coming up. So I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I kind of have a, you know, my dad was so great in raising me. Um, and a lot of times I say like some of my most feminine qualities I learned from my father and it's later in life that that sentence became problematic for me is because I really just learned good parenting or uh, I was cared well and nurtured well. And some of those phrases that I defined as feminine were just really good parental things and really good God things, you know, like that, yes, that nurturing, that comfort, that uh, ability to see in a particular way, listen and engage compassion in a particular way isn't limited to and we sometimes can see it most clearly in god as mother god as father um yeah and so it's like an invitation you know in a lot of ways to to kind of allow ourselves to be who god has made us to be yes um and heal us in that way also so yeah i think Yeah, it's it's definitely, yeah, I love that. I think it's a good point too, that um, I love you bringing up your dad because I've heard you say that before about him. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, that that's something that doesn't have to be limited to one parent or the other. You know, these are things that we all, like there are going to be things we're good at coming into Mm -hmm. this and things that we really stink at. Mm -hmm. And um, like there's hope for all of us to like, 
do better and learn Mm -hmm. these other sides of things that we maybe always have been taught are like inherently male or female or, you know, like that, that a dad couldn't be a great listener or tender Mm -hmm. with their child or, Mm -hmm. and I know so many dads that are that, but there's that, like sometimes that idea of for men and women of like what they can and can't be Mm -hmm. within that. Mm -hmm. So I love that. So like in general, I would say um, like moms are known for being like great at comforting their kids. Um, And like I just said, like, dads are great at this too. Like my husband has learned how to be a better comforter because, um, I realized that I couldn't hold all of that myself. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't do all the comforting of all Mm -hmm. my children and didn't want to. So, um, I know that you and your husband, Josh, like have, are also like, I've seen you guys at work. Um, how do you guys take God's example of comforting Mm -hmm. and use that within your own parenting styles? Yeah. It's interesting. Um, sometimes I think Josh is a better comforter than I am. He's, um, he is, he's just a very, um, tender and, um, caring, you know, one time it was a bad mistake. I, I regret doing this, but we decided as a family to rank our family members from kindest to least kind. Um, as kind of a funny bit, Dangerous. you know, as you do with teenagers, you walk yourself into that. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say Josh did a lot better than I did already. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a dangerous game to play. It really is. I was a little, I was a little surprised at where it ended up. I'm going to say my sarcasm apparently doesn't come across as kindness. <laughs> it's not <laughs> coming across the way you would hope. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Well, it's interesting too, because even, G- you know, um, I think even Jesus in like, I think what we see in displayed in the life of Jesus is this, these different moments of tenderness and then these different moments of like commanding attention or, you know, um, uh, anger expressed and, yeah. you know, this is the whole of his humanity in him is being expressed in both sides of this. And I think that's actually the invitation for us as parents, co-parents is the fullness of our humanity to be available. And, 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 and that, which is in God designed in us, our Imago Dei, when I say humanity, I mean, Imago Dei in us. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, there are moments in which, um, my children awaken a unique comfort in within me. And then mm-hmm. there are unique moments when my, because my husband has permission to embrace his full Imago day that my kids awaken that particular comfort in them in him. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's kind of just giving yourself permission. Like it's actually all in you, you know, um, yeah. the capacity to care. Well, the capacity to nurture is in each of us. We all bear the image of God in us. And um, so I think most, I think sometimes it's permission giving. And we just have, you know, partnered in our parenthood, parenting together in a way that allows, you know, permission to be like, even maybe like, I don't have it in me right now. I'm going to need to tag you in to be the comforter um, because I'm just not there in that space right now. And so I think it's, I mean, what a game changer for parents if we could, you know, like care well for our kids and how they feel by allowing ourselves to feel the fullness of it. I love um, that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, you know, that's what you see again in the life of Jesus. You really do like see kind of him able to sit with someone, to weep with someone. Um, and those are good things for parenting to be able to weep yeah. with your kids. And then you see Jesus mad at the injustice and he's, you know, turning tables over. I mean, I don't know if I've turned tables over in your home, but, um, but, you know, we can see injustice take place in our family yeah. and our, to our kids and to be able to like, say, you know, like I'm going, you know, and we use language like, um, what is it, what is it? The mother bear comes out in that moment, you know, yes. you know, yeah, and the mama bear, you don't yeah. want to face the mama bear. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. But I also think, you know, that same um, righteous anger comes in, you know, fathers and mothers and just giving mm-hmm. ourselves permission to have that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think 
Yeah, I love that. I love that. And I think it's so interesting um, because we're both on this adoption journey. And I, I know um, I'm guessing you went you went through like we're older adoptive parents now. So what they like the adopted parenting training that they go through mm-hmm. now is um probably better than what we Love got right. that we learned more, you know, over the mm-hmm. years. Um, but it like rocked my parenting um oh, yeah. a lot. And like, um, in such great ways, like challenged yeah. me in a lot of ways, even just like, I don't know, like timeouts, like I had been giving mm-hmm. my kids timeouts and them advising like, Hey, let's not do a timeout. We don't want to, you know, push our kids away in this moment. We right. want to bring them in. And, and, um, like that's something like Jesse and I had to like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. And we had our two older biological children that were like, this isn't just for, this isn't just for our daughter that we're bringing home. Like this Mm -hmm. is for our kids. Like this is for our parenting and like the connectedness um, that I saw. Like, I'm like, of course that's what Jesus modeled was connectedness. Right. Right. um, But there's something like, I think like we do what we're taught a lot of the time. And so it Mm -hmm. took like being open and like learning something Mm -hmm. to change how that that narrative is of like yeah. bringing your kids in and that there's just so many things like that. But um, yeah, like the, there's a gift to being able to challenge yourself as a couple, mm-hmm. like you both mm-hmm. have to go through those things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, of yeah. like learning that together and not just one or the other, you know, yeah. like, Hey, yeah. I heard this, but yeah. yeah, I love, I love the different versions of Jesus that mm-hmm. we get an example of and that you can mm-hmm. think of for both you know, male mm-hmm. and female, like moms yeah. and dads, that this is something that we both possess, um, yeah. Yeah. you know, inherently. Um, so obviously, um, sacrifice was a big part mm-hmm. of Jesus's mm-hmm. story. Mm-hmm. And, um, I think moms are asked to sacrifice a yeah. lot. Um, and it's kind of like, sometimes it's the like yoke we put on ourselves of mm-hmm. like, I am going to be the like sacrificial caregiver. I'm going to pour in, my whole life is going to be mm-hmm. poured into my children's. Um, and I'm not dogging all of that for sure. But for me, um, like I definitely did some of that when my kids were younger to myself of like, and it didn't turn out well for me. I ended up in yeah. some therapy. That's right. That's <laughs> I'm right. like, why am I doing this? I don't yeah. have anything yeah. left to give now. Um, mm-hmm. And I want to give, I want to, I want to pour my heart out to my kids for mm-hmm. sure. But um, like I, like I said, I've just struggled on the front of doing too much and I am much healthier now, but I still sometimes maybe enter into codependence. Yeah. Um, and that was like what was modeled for me a hundred percent. So a lot of it's like redoing yeah. it, but what, what are some healthy ways yeah. that Jesus modeled of how we can like, yeah, enter into that without sacrificing everything of who we are, yeah. you know, as yeah. moms and dads. Yeah. Well, I feel a little like I want to say <laughs> from the start is even the idea of Jesus sacrificing. Um, this is like a divine purpose moment. Um, and the laying down of life is, you know, an, an invitation that is given to lay down our life for our friends. Um, and at the same time, there's this also invitation that's like, follow me or my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Mm-hmm. There is often like this tension of um, an invitation to carry the cross, an invitation yep. to lay down our, our concerns and worries to Christ. So I think for me in parenting, when I think about what I can offer my children is that I learned from Jesus and the way he laid down his life and the way he followed um, even in the garden when he says, you know, not my will, but your will be done. And you yes. know, this is an internal struggle, that there is a part of him that is doesn't want to endure the suffering he's about ready to endure. And sometimes it's actually more about that moment for me with my kids mm-hmm. is um, what is it that like, even I don't want to do right now, that is maybe a will that I need to surrender and, and and sometimes it's not, you know, um, it isn't what we have, you know, seen. I, I feel often like there is a dying to like all things 
for our children. And in that, it feels like um, we're actually not showing our children what it means to like live into our identity, our purpose, our calling. Yeah. And yeah. So sometimes it's like the will of what is it God has willed for me to do in this particular moment and making sure I do that. Mm. And that is where it's like the sacrifice is meant to come in the invitation to what God has called us to do, not to um, our kids' needs, desires, wants. It's it's much more about what has God called me to do. I have often felt like um, if I wasn't faithful to what God has called me to do, that actually mm-hmm. my kids would suffer more than if I was sacrificing so they could have all their needs, wants, and desires met. Oh, totally. Um, you know, so that, so then it's like, I think there is an invitation to, you know, like take up the cross. That is a real invitation. But what is that call that God has given us to do to take up our cross? And then what is it when we think about parenting? Because I often think, some, and this may, maybe is just me, but um, the times where I feel like, you know, I get a little caught up in like, um, I'm trying to think of a really practical example right now because, you know, like my kids want to have success in something and I want them to have success yes. in it because they desire it. And, and so then I begin to like sacrifice things to help them get to this success thing. But maybe it's in the not having success and that, that my kids are learning, you know, what is what it means to walk through Which failure so and disappointment. Hard. Yes. But to let your kids do that is, so oftentimes like we're sacrificing and it's not the right even sacrifice for our kids instead of saying, God, what is it that you will for me? And how do I, how do I sacrifice towards that? And that benefit then unfolds for our kids. Um, hmm. And that is an honoring, you know, I mean, I would take the bullet for my kid in a moment, um, yeah. which feels like, you know, a hard thing to say on a day like today. Um, and the realities of that. So there is a laying down our lives. There is a, a willingness that we're willing to do. And there's an invitation. What is it that God has called me to do? Um, and how can I model for my kids what that kind of obedience and that kind of sacrifice looks like mm. more than losing my personality, losing my identity totally. to give my kid everything I think they need. Um, those two things are different. And I think we get them blurred a lot. Like we blur them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. that's really deep, Neely. I'm not even, I'm not being sarcastic here. (laughs) Like that's really deep to look at that, that way. I've not like considered, like, I totally agree with you, but I've not considered that that's like where the beautiful tension lies right there. Like Mm -hmm. at that point in the story of like what sacrifice looks like. And that's exactly, especially it's easier when you have like older kids to kind of look back and see Mm -hmm. You know, areas that you, of course, could do have changed how things had been. But and I mean, that's the thing is we're developing our kids and trying to be a part of this, like letting them have some of their own stories and plot yeah. points. And yeah, like we're taking yeah. something from our kids by trying to yeah, sacrifice everything yeah. for them. Like we're not helping them in the long run. I don't yeah. think, yeah. you know, I think it's something bigger. I think it actually was in my home study with... Um, through AGCI yeah. um, was a moment where he asked the question. And again, you're probably right. They probably, you know, uh, my daughter's been home 14 years now. Um, so a long time. But I was thinking it was in that, I don't know if it was on the application or through our, our social worker, the question of like, you know, what is the goal for, you know, parenthood, you know, and it, it was like a question of like, they wanted you to know, say, are you going to say, like, I want my kids to be happy. I want my kids to be this when they grow up, you know. And I do think there's a wrestling there. If, if there's clarity and, yeah. like, I want my kids to grow up knowing that they are deeply loved. They are, they are created in the image of God. That they have purpose. Um, yeah. And, you know, those things all are worth sacrificing for. If yeah. I want my if I think it's about my kids' happiness, my kids' um, material success, you know, those things are just not, they're not, it's not it. I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. I love that. It's super deep. And I wish 
honestly that I um, had thought through or known that. I mean, we're all where we're at, like for a reason and we're all on an individual Mm -hmm. journey. But I think it's so great. Like maybe a younger mom right now is listening and hopefully has her Mm -hmm. own moment of like, whoa, that's that's pretty cool and gives us it gives uh, it, for me i just feel like that idea gives me direction so when you're like trying to make these big decisions yeah. for your kids or like what you should do what the next steps are there is that mm-hmm. direction within that um that like helps you process through yeah. like where do i want my kids going is this something that's helpful <laughs> or is this yeah. something not you know and and run through yeah. that And I think even like, you know, when my kids were young, I felt often like, um, you know, we're all trying to do the best we can. And sometimes that best I can gets compared to each other. Um, And when you like are much more certain of like, oh, no, I think this is how God has called me to obey. It kind of helps with that, um, you know. In, whether it's internal comparison yeah. that's happening or, you know, I, the handful of times in my life when my kids were young and I would have to travel for work, you know, people would say, like, I don't know how you do yeah. that, you know, how you leave your kids. And it would be only in um, knowing my identity, yeah. my, what God's will was for me that it actually felt like to not do it would be more harmful yeah. to my kids. Because to sacrifice it would be actually not modeling for my kids what it means to live out who God's called yeah. to be. So it was helpful in those times. I agree. As well. And I mean, and you said it, that example for me, I just saw it. I mean, just as a, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know that I ever said those words to you, like, but I just seeing, mm-hmm. like, oh, it is possible. Like, obviously, we're both working moms, mm-hmm. um, but we both also were at home moms. Like when our kids were younger, we got to have that mm-hmm. as well. Um, but yeah, I think like seeing you lean into it, I didn't know what that would look like in my life, but it was almost permission giving mm-hmm. for me to lean into it. And mm-hmm. that's not even to say every mom is supposed to get a job or work, but whatever that is for right. you, right. leaning into who God created right. you uniquely to be yeah. is I think the most important and powerful and models that, like you said, for all of your kids, like searching that out and embracing that. It's huge. I love that. So I'm going to quote a little scripture here, Neely. And um, I love it when you do that. So Matthew 23, um, 37, uh, Jesus says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those who those sent to you. How often have I longed, and here's the part that I love, to gather yeah. your children together as a hen mm-hmm. gathers her chicks under her wings. I just love it so much. And like mm-hmm. through Jesus, God showed us that he calls people in. He doesn't call mm-hmm. them out. Um, and he brings like what mm-hmm. we were talking about before with connection and what we like learned in our parenting um, when we you know, adopted, at least for my husband and I, but he brings us close in those times when sometimes like, um, Mm -hmm. actually what I was like, what was modeled to me, what was taught to me was, and like, can be, what can be the human response is to like push people away in that moment of like, I need Mm -hmm. my space from you. Like you need to go. And I'm not saying that's always wrong. There are definitely times that I need my space from people. Like, um, but like okay. <laughs> what um what does scripture want us to know about like this kind of beautiful connection that God talks about like I love mm-hmm. like a, as a hen gathers mm-hmm. her chicks under her wings I'm like mm-hmm. oh I feel that so deeply mm-hmm. Yeah yeah I actually was just in um Jerusalem on um, where this is ha- where Jesus is said to have said this oh, cool. And there's a beautiful mosaic they made of um, like a hen with Aww. its wings open yes. and all the baby chicks inside. And it, it's, it's actually quite beautiful on an altar that looks out to Jerusalem from um, Mount wow. Olives. So it's actually very beautiful. But, um, and 
for some reason, thinking about that just made me sort of forget your question. <laughs> I get it. Well, now I'm like, tell me more about this beautiful, like, that's amazing. Yes. You were just there and you saw it. But I mean, really, like, I would just, yes. like, as we talk about that, like, what does scripture um, mm-hmm. want us to know about yeah. that specific type yeah. of connection that, that yeah. you know, yeah. Jesus yeah. talked about himself? Yeah. 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 Um, well, I mean, it's, it's interesting because you've said so many good, like little phrases of, you know, uh, even the time, time in versus time out, you know, like the, the idea of getting close. And I do think that that is, you know, if you look at, I would say almost every paternal example given in scripture from father to maternal, the yes. mother ones, it's all about intimacy. It's all about closeness. It's all about um, and it, I think that's even why scripture, you know, the, the, the different authors and poets and prophets use that language is to remind us that's what God's inviting us into is mm-hmm. closeness. And so, you know, then again, internally, and this is where it's, I think coming back to our image of God, yes. that we bear this, that we have a desire for that kind of connection and to provide it to our kids, to bring our kids close. To, you know, you know, even this moment when Jesus is on the mountain, you know, like this is timeline wise, he's about ready to endure suffering. And, um, you know, these, if you keep on reading, it's like, you don't know yet who's with you, who's among you. Um, And it's like often, you know, as our kids uh, or even our spouses or others in our lives, when it's most painful is actually the time to bring yes. them closest to us. And that's the beauty of what Jesus does over and over in the, the accounts, as well as when you read the the Hebrew scriptures, yes. the older Testament, like again and again, it's get close, get close. Um, and again, I think that's the, the beautiful metaphor imagery of parenthood yes. throughout scripture, whether it's father or mother. It's all about intimacy yeah. and closeness. And it doesn't so, have to be, I um, love that we've been talking about this, obviously, but it doesn't have to be like, just because it's a hen, you know, with all of her babies, like this mm-hmm. is something for all of us. That was Jesus giving it permi- us permission for this to be yes. for everyone. That's like the totally. beauty of it that totally. he's doing, he's talking about it as a male, you yes. know, so it, it opens it up. Yes. 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 And not to, you know, come back to our controversial subject again, but um, it's the beauty of Jesus, who is why sometimes we get trapped in a male understanding of God, because the person is a man. um, And there's actually a lot of theology about um, God as man and Jesus as man. But here is Jesus again, kind of pulling himself mm-hmm. away from a limitation of manhood to even a motherhood yeah. trait. Um, and again, I think that's why, it, you know, the Genesis story matters yeah. so much. That Genesis 1, that in God's image, male and female were created, that this is within each of us is that ability, you know, my when we, um, when our daughter came home, she was a little bit older and, um, you know, I don't know if they told you this, Marissa, when you, but did they say like, Oh, you know, typically when you bring your daughter home, they are more like in, curious about yes, dad. Yes, totally. Yeah. Did they say that? Yeah. But same thing. They told us like, you know, they'll be more curious about dad. You know, our daughter wanted nothing to do with my husband, nothing to do with Josh. Um, and like she just all her caretakers had been women. That's what she familiar, knew. Yeah. Safe yep. for her. Yeah. And so she, I mean, nothing. <laughs> uh, we, it was a little surprising because it was like, you know, we adopted, a, she's a little bit older. Um, she was almost four when she came home. So we, I kind of thought I would be skipping, you know, some of the newborn yeah, totally. experiences, but it felt like I had brought a newborn home because she only wanted she wanted to sleep near me. She wanted to be near me. She wanted me all to feed her. Things. All the things. Yes. Like, here she we are. We're back <laughs> from again. <me>. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I think it would have been easy for hmm. Josh to say, 
that's fine. You go do that. You push over there. But Josh modeled like, okay, I'm going to pull close. I'm going to be intentional. What will she do with me? And I'm going to make sure there's lots of times for us to get close and play close and sit yes. close and um, begin to form that relationship. And, you know, you have to be willing to be uh, a mother hen yeah. who gathers in that moment and to for that attachment to take place. And so I think, you know, again, it's within all of us, the capacity to love mm-hmm. and to parent in that way, not just Totally. And I think so beautiful, like as we, um, I don't know, I just love that imagery that it's something for all of us, like that it isn't, um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, this goes way back to when I had my first baby um, of like the idea that I even had in my mind of like, well, my, I guess I'm the only one that can do this. Like, and then mm-hmm. to my second mm-hmm. child where I like freed up some of that and gave my husband even some more permission, mm-hmm. which was good for me. And so beautiful to see him mm-hmm. rise to the occasion mm-hmm. as well and like be more of a yeah. caretaker um, role that in my mind he couldn't be, uh, you know, and then mm-hmm. moving on to bring our daughter home where, you know, like I couldn't nurse um, and some people do, you know decide to try to relactate. So that's an option for some people, but it wasn't something that I felt Mm -hmm. like I could do at the time. And, um, like, so all of a sudden my husband was like put into this, like, I, I, and this is, again, I think it was, it took me allowing that for him to, Mm -hmm. um, join me in like truly both, offering her those things. Yeah. And ours, ours was mm-hmm. funny. I mean, she was a baby and she actually like the first week we were with her, like she was a daddy's girl from the start and kind of had no use for me. <laughs> and that changed as I went on. She decided right. I was okay too. <laughs> um, but it was like the first time with all of our kids that I was like, whoa, like she's wanting that from him. And he's totally, and again, mm-hmm. this is me coming from a different background where I didn't have that model, but he's totally capable and not only capable, mm-hmm. like thriving in this role. Um, like this right. isn't, it wasn't right. just something that I could do yeah. as a mom, which was such a, yeah. a big moment yeah. for me. And also like, yeah. I honestly apologized. <laughs> I'm like, not only did I make things so much harder on myself, but I was keeping him from like leaning into his mm. truest self because of my idea mm-hmm. of what this should look like. And um, yeah. like yeah. how beautiful it is to see our husbands too, like come into themselves yeah. um, and who they right. are, who God created them to be. And that it's not just yeah. all, it's yeah. not, we don't get to hug all of the good stuff there. And then same thing, it goes right. both ways. Right. Like obviously we're talking about yes. Um, yes. Mother's Day and that kind of thing, but that there are things, you know, where the mama bear comes out or all the things that we yeah. like that for whatever reason is totally okay. But um, you know, some righteous anger, yeah. I definitely have all that like that. Sometimes more so, totally. sometimes totally. a little more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little fiery than okay. I should be. Well, it, yeah. And I th- I mean, I wonder, I, w- I would want to say, like, like parenting is a beautiful um, invitation to self learning and growth and yep. reflection. And it, it is beautiful. And it's like also a yeah. privilege. And, and, you know, there are parents out there who do it alone. There are parents out there who then have to engage a yeah. community mm-hmm. around yeah. them to help parents. I mean, and we engage a community to help yeah. us parents as well. But, like, I think it's in, um, it's in being you, who you are, God created who you to be, that our parents best parenting happens and so that's where then community or partnership happens and is so beneficial is you know I we are different like not but you and I are different you you know your kids and my kids have benefited from you being around and me being around because we're different and we parent different and and that then is saying is true in our own homes so much of it is about us recognizing who Mm -hmm. we are and what what is it that God has wired mm-hmm. us? How has our story shaped us? Yep. And 
and recognizing again within us the capacity to live into what we see God's character as a parent. Um, and so I think, you know, obviously I wouldn't want, um, I think there's, you know, we're not all the oh, same. Oh yeah. Yeah. Any human, exactly. no human is the same. And, and, um, there is opportunity for us all to grow and experience and learn and be reshaped and make, um, different decisions about what we're going to allow ourselves to do. And, um, and the way we're going to be, you know, I, I want to move up the kindness scale in my house. You <laughs> know? Gonna, I don't know um, if we can I do want that to test do. again. I'm not sure, but <laughs> Maybe yeah. it's just like a, an right. informal right. question. I'm like, hey, how am I doing on the kindness? Scale? That's right. How am I doing on this? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, those are, those are things, you know, that we, there are areas in which we want to grow and improve. And then there's our areas where the growing and improving is embracing yeah. who we are. Um, well said. Well said. I think that's so. exactly it. And like, I think anyone listening, I hope like what they would take. Because I, I genuinely like the older I get and the like longer I parent and I've shared things with you. It's like the more convinced I am that I have no idea what I'm do, I'm doing. Um, mm-hmm. Like, I, yeah, I, it's not I'm not the first person to say something like that, but it's true. Like the older I get, the more I'm like, oh, boy, I thought I knew what I, I thought I had this under control. And mm-hmm. turns out I don't. Um Like so mm-hmm. as people are listening, I like just consider this like a call to like learning more to leaning in to figuring Mm -hmm. those things out and that they both can um exist at the same time you know that that's Mm -hmm. and sometimes that's hard to I know I struggle with two things being both at the same time right and you know like leaning into that is is hard but um so I would love like if you're if you're ready for this and if not, we can put it on like later. But um, for Mm -hmm. anyone that's like heard this and maybe this is the first time they've heard any of these things and they'd like to like lean into learning more about it. Do you happen to have Mm -hmm. any like good resources um, for people? Yeah. Yes, I pulled them down before because um, I thought they were they're really good. Um, Perfect. But is it backwards? Oh, no, it it worked. Okay. Okay, good. First one, liberating okay. traditions. Um, this one, this one in there has um, some co-parenting, but also talks a lot about um, some of the language around God that we don't celebrate and use. Talks a little bit around um, El Shaddai's okay. in here. This, this information just regard talks a little bit about the pronouns and how we ended up where we yeah, are. Super our pronouns. interesting. Okay, it's pretty, it's pretty great. Yeah, and then this one. Okay. gender and grace and and this one also has you know a little bit more i mean there's a whole section on yes parents and partners um and so it's a really great uh resource um, she's a pretty well-known okay uh, theologian yeah. but these are that's a good read it's 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 not he- okay that's too good. heady but this is these are the things i need there. we all yeah. know that i don't need too heady yeah <laughs> <laughs> But they're both really, really great reads. And there's each of them like clear sections where it's like parenting, great. co-parenting, um, gender and, and God's I name. And so you you would be easy, okay. easy to find a section you'd want to read. So you wouldn't be in for the whole book. I love that. So. I knew yeah, those are you would two have really good resources. resources. Like if nothing else <laughs> that we can do. Like, that's right. Like, that's right. That's right. The resources are great. And well, and um like I so I don't know I love this conversation I love um, like I I knew I would I learned something from you today and I so appreciate that you would even like take the time to share and um, like do some education around that and um, yeah I obviously think you're pretty great and worth listening to and um, that you've done I I know you've done this work for yourself too like and that you're always like taking that posture of like learning more and doing mm-hmm. that work so I so appreciate you like coming on and sharing and well, seriously thank you that was Pastor Neely McQueen sharing on God's guide to complete parenting 
If you like what you heard, please make sure to follow us and rate us wherever you listen to podcasts. Keep up with us on social media by following us on Instagram and Facebook at All God's Children International. Thank you so much for watching or listening to Together by AGCI.